Welcome back to my channel, you guys. So for today's video, we're gonna be doing green ideas and budget-friendly ideas for babies. been doing a lot of reading, <laughs> a lot of audiobooks, etc. about sustainability. And the more information I get about it, the more it's making me question things that I do currently and habits I have and trying to, you know, just curb them as much as possible. So one of the things um, that I did initially when Ronan was born is we had tons of new clothes, like tons and tons of new clothes. And, and I'm just like, he's a baby, he needs all the new things. And initially I didn't have anything. So of course it makes sense to buy a lot of things new. But then later I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? As he was getting older, he started growing out of things so fast. Like literally I wouldn't even have a chance to put the item on him before he had already grown out of it. So I had so many excess things that I could not even get through. And I was thinking about it and I'm like, okay, imagine this is your last kid, right? You didn't even get them to try that pair of pants on or that shirt on. And then you give it away to Goodwill or whatever, right? So I'm thinking like that item never got used. It never got used. And you put in a circulation in the use, doesn't get used at that point, then it's going to a landfill. I had started out like he needs this he needs that he needs this he needs that but like the more I'm thinking about it, I'm like okay well maybe I should just check resources and see what's out there first on Facebook like some toys might not even be sold anymore but they're still perfectly good toys it's just those children don't need them anymore and they don't sell them anymore so it's kind of good to check on Facebook marketplace to be like okay what options do I have like this kids already used it but they're grown out of it now and people just need to get rid of it so first off for cost savings getting those used toys I mean they have Lysol wipes for crying out loud just clean them um and then plus you're gonna see them so you'll see if it's worth your time to get them or not same lines with sustainability as well as budget <laughs> so initially the investment in cloth diapers is quite a bit like I will be honest with you um, I went through Amazon and they had Nora's nursery that was the website or the source that I used for the diapers those were the cheapest I found with the best ratings um, so I I got those diapers it was, if I remember correctly, like a seven pack for 70 bucks. So you're talking about like $10 a diaper, okay? But the way I look at it is I'm paying $10 a diaper, but that diaper is used until it can't be used anymore. Like you can use it multiple children, you're washing it over and over, like a pair of pants, for example. So um, it also came with seven of the inserts as well. So we have an insert for each diaper plus the regular liner, the waterproof liner, um, and they just snap. It's very easy to use. So um, the only negative, which I will be real with you, like it's not the most glamorous job ever, is if they do poop in the diaper, like not the most glamorous thing ever, you do have to wash the poop out. So if it's just like when they're newborns and it's like just the liquidy poops, that type of thing, you really don't even need to wash it out. You can just wash the diaper in general. I just only do diaper load. Um, but if, but I was still washing them just to be like more cautious. I like attached a little sprayer to the toilet and then just spray off any like loose stuff into the toilet and flush. So I usually do that. Um, and then that way I can get rid of any loose stools, that sort of thing. And then just wash a relatively clean diaper. That way I don't have too much like poo in my <laughs> washing machine. Um, but if it's a solid, for sure, you have to wash it off into the toilet. So that part, not the most glamorous job ever. But at my point in my life, my kid's pooping like not even once a day like not even once a day. So I'm like, okay, I'm cleaning not that many poopy diapers. Maybe one day he'll poop twice in a day, but then he won't poop for two days. So I'm like, at this point, it's not that many poopy diapers. Most of the time it's a pee diaper. All you're doing is just basically throwing them in the washing machine like you would wash any other piece of wet clothing. So 
it's not that much of a struggle. <laughs> um, but I think about all of the disposable diapers that I'm not using, it's a lot. Right now I am using, I do still use a little bit of disposable, so I'm not gonna lie. I do use them primarily for going out because it's kind of awkward to like take off a cloth diaper, put on a new cloth diaper, and then keep the old one like in your bag or whatever. So if we're going out to the store or something, I will put a disposable on him. And then if he's home, then that's what he's majority of the time wearing is the cloth diapers. And then if we are going, um, oh, and then overnight, I will put a, a regular diaper on him overnight. He could wear a cloth diaper overnight, but I feel like the disposable keeps the moisture away a little bit better. And I'm not gonna be regularly changing him throughout the night. He's not gonna be changed for a long period of time. So just for my sake, like my sanity, it makes more sense to put a disposable on at night. But if you think about it, if I'm using one diaper a day uh, versus like six to seven diapers a day as you know, disposable wise, that's a huge savings. I can buy one diaper box and that'll last me an obscene amount of time versus, or, you know, if you're changing them all the time and tossing them in the garbage and making more trash. So it's one thing to consider if you're open to it. I feel like it, even if you didn't use them 100% of the time, but you cut back a lot, um, you know, it, like in my case, if I'm just using maybe, like let's say we went out and he slept and when I'm using two diapers, you know, um, of disposable, I think that's such a better situation than using like 10 diapers or six to eight diapers or however many you're using during the day. So that's something to keep in mind and then I, I mean, you can kind of see here in the background, I bought him so many books in the beginning, like just really classics, things like that. And I love reading to him, but I was realizing, I was like, I want him to have so many different books and we're gonna run out of room eventually. There's gonna be just too many books. There's not enough shelf space for all that. So my thought was, why am I not utilizing my library enough? What if I get a book and I don't like it? Then we have this book just clogging up space. I'll have to find some way to get rid of it, you know, to someone else. So, and then one of the books I got, I got like a Dollar Tree book. Okay, that was probably where the mistake was first, but it looked like a cute little story and it was a garbage book. And now I have it here, it's stuck. I have to just hang on to it. So I was thinking what we should do is just go to the library. We'll check out a variety of different books, right? We'll read them, we'll go through them. If there's a book that I absolutely love and I'm like, he has to have this book because it's so vital, then I can purchase it secondhand at that point. But there's no point of me buying all these books and I don't know if he's gonna like them. I don't know if they're worth reading, that sort of thing. I'm just going off the title or what I think it is gonna be like. Um, so there's just no point. It's better just to get at the library, find out if you like it, and then you can buy that book if you really have to. So I think that's another way to save money, help with the planet, because you're not buying new books all the time. So breast milk when possible. <laughs> this is a hard one for me because I am not pumping enough to support him like by any means. But if you're able to do it and you can, that is another way to not only save money, but also to help the planet because you're not making, we're not making these formulas, we're not getting the big plastic tubs, things like that. So if possible, awesome to do. I know some people can't, so it's not like a judgment on people that can't do that. But if you're able to, then it's really helpful to do that. Um, and I feel like we're also not using as at our house anyway, we're not using as much formula because I'm able to pump some and be able to get him some milk. That way he has at least some breast milk in his system and that just saves me from having to make an extra bottle of formula, you know, and save our formula for another time. Especially with all of that issue with the formula shortage. And I feel like it's gotten a lot better, but um, sometimes you still have to like, if you're trying to find a specific one, you might have to go to a, a, a further out store or something like that. So just things to keep in mind. I can editing me here so after I filmed everything I had a couple more additions or thoughts to add to the video one of which is your local buy nothing group that has been 
a really great resource actually. I haven't yet got anything off of there. I know as I say it's a great resource. Um, but with like Facebook Marketplace, um, the Buy Nothing group I think would be so helpful for like future needs. Um, I've been taking a look on there for let's say um, like baby play pens or like just miscellaneous baby needs that come up. So um, I think that would also be a great resource to add yourself into those groups. Um, and then the other option is to help with sustainability is if you have things that you're no longer going to use, you can put them in the buy nothing group and or sell them if you need the money back. But if it's something where you're like, I don't need this and I don't want to deal with the cash issue, then um, just putting it in the buy nothing group, you can just put it on your porch. Someone can come get it. Um, that's another way to do some decluttering, but sustainably um, versus just donating to Goodwill and hoping that it gets purchased and reused. Um, so that's one point. And then also... I just thought about another one, you guys. I saw this idea and, um, and or I read about it. I'm not sure. I'm, it just came back to me. Birthday parties go, things like that. Um, asking people not to bring gifts for your kid or if they do bring a gift, then it'd be a very specific thing that they actually do need. Not just kind of, oh, I saw this and they might like it. Uh, I know that kind of takes the fun aspect out of it, but as far as that goes, um, being able to make sure that that action item will be used and it's not just going to go into a drawer somewhere or a bin. So um, that's important. Like if they need a specific size clothes, a specific item, like maybe just having a list of things that your kid specifically needs. That way they get exactly what they need. Um, what else? Oh, I've also seen too um, where some families are like, don't get them gifts at all, but maybe put some money together for like an activity or if you want to take them somewhere, um, then like having like something that can contribute to that, um, putting together like a, a fund to take them to the museum or something like that. Um, I think those are all great ideas because they're getting the experience. There's no, uh, you know, like a paper trail to that. Um, but it's still a very valuable gift. So, um, and it might actually be more memorable than like, for example, I wouldn't remember what someone got me when I was five years old. Like they could have got me the coolest toy ever at that time and I wouldn't remember it, but I would remember if they took me to the movies or something like that. So just um, other aspects to think about too, just um, other ways that you can give people gifts other than physical objects. just the larger issue at hand too. Um, having kids isn't the most sustainable thing ever. I mean, actually not having kids is more sustainable. Um, but there are some people like myself that is like one of the things you really want in life. Um, so at least if you already have your children, then just trying to do the best you can to teach them sustainability and be able to do, uh, well in the future as far as not being so wasteful. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind um, and not overpopulating as much as possible, like having a reasonable amount of kids. But everybody's life is different, but you just have to kind of make those decisions with that in mind, I guess. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share my thoughts on that. If you guys have any cool suggestions on like ways you're saving money with your kids and or helping the planet with your kids, like little green tips, that is wonderful. Please feel free to sound off in the comments about that. And uh, I will, hopefully this just gave you some inspiration on maybe things that you can try to um, kind of help your budget with having kids. So, um, oh, one more thing. I just remembered. Also, free activities. So um, recently, you know, as far as going to the park, things like that, that's free <laughs> entertainment for children, um, just going for walks, things like that. So I think that is a big one as well. And not always have to just rely on toys and stuff like that. You can actually just take them to free activities. Um, always looking on your community web pages. And a lot of times you'll find some free activities that way. And then that way you can, um, come up with ideas on way to spend time with them without having to spend a bunch of money too. Um, and that helps the planet because they're just activities that are being held anyway. <laughs> You're just showing up. Um, 
and especially going to the park, walking, things like that, all positives. So hope that was some inspiration for you guys. Uh, and thank you for watching. Bye.